What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video. Genuinely, I get asked this every stream, especially from newcomers. We're going to show you exactly how to pick a specific skill for each player if you want to have additional skills. So we're going to go through this as quickly and as thoroughly as possible. I did a video on this before, but it was a little bit confusing and a lot more questions were asked uh, since then. And now I'm going to be doing this one, right? So you will notice in each player profile, you will have skills and then you will have additional skills, right? These additional skills are basically skills that you can add to your players. So some of the most popular ones will be blocker for a DMF, Heading uh, for a centre back or a centre forward, double touch of course for attacking midfielders or centre forwards, left wingers, right wingers and one touch pass which is probably the most sought after one. I would say blocker and one touch pass are the two most sought after, right? So if you look at Bellingham here, we will actually see that he doesn't have any additional skills on here. His player skills are down the left ranging from double touch to interception, you've got soul control, rising shot, one touch pass. We're going to want to give him additional skills. Now, ideally for the formation and the tactics that we're playing, the acquirable skills here, there's a full list of them if you press triangle or Y on the PC or Xbox controller. And we're going to want to kind of turn Bellingham into more of a defensive minded player. So we do want to like look at maybe blocker, maybe heading, um, man marking, slide tackle, like a couple of other uh, player skills that we could look at for more attacking based players, especially shooting ones like rising shot, double touch, one touch pass. If you've got very nice players that are like really skillful and balanced and they don't have one touch pass or double touch, these are really good player skills to give as well, right? So is it a bit of a lottery? Yes. Do you need a bit of luck? Yes, but you can control what you get. So we're going to show you a big mistake that a lot of people make. You've probably met it because I've met it before at the, at the launch of this new feature way back when. But when we actually add a skill trainer here and use a skill trainer, we're actually going to get a skill that we already have on Bellingham. So it'll say that we're unable to learn the player skill. Does the, the skill token get put back to us into our inventory? No, they actually take the skill trainer and give you nothing back because you can't have duplicate player skills. So this has been a big issue for people that don't really understand the system. So hopefully this video answers all the questions, right? So because Bellingham already possesses that skill that I'm after unlocking, I am not able to actually get it and add it to his card, right? So when we take a look at his card here, nothing has changed. We still have the exact same card. So this is a little trick that you can do, right? If you go over to standard player list, and if you're just going to be buying from the GP market, we're going to sort the GP market just by uh, price. All of these players are the default players that you get when you start your dream team. If you don't have them anymore, you can just simply buy them from the GP market. They cost you nothing, nada zilch zero whatever you want to call it right we can buy any of these make sure it's an outfield player because you can't transfer goalkeeper player skills from outfield players to goalkeeper and vice versa and also make sure that the players that you're buying have zero skills that they have nothing in that column that we're seeing here so that we do when we do go into the skill training he has no player skills right and that all the additional skills you're going to be giving him because we can't duplicate any skills because you know we don't have that issue that we had with bellingham this player santon has no skills right so we basically can give him and take the risk of giving him any skill that we want once we've given him the skill then we can actually decide right who do I want to give rising shot to who do I want to give one touch pass to who do I want to give blocker to so yes there is still a bit of a lottery there yes it is still a bit luck um whether you get this player skill that you want but the more skill tokens that you have the more you stack the deck in your favor right so for us with this case we already know that rising shot is with Bellingham so we do want to give it to somebody that doesn't have it does Messi have rising shot? He doesn't. So what do we do? We go into legacy transfer and then we're going to convert Santonja, who we just gave the, trans the skill to. We're going to give him the rising shot skill, transfer it with the legacy transfer from this card to Messi's card. Now make sure and don't do it the other way around. Don't turn Messi into the trainer, if you get me. You have to pick the player first and then do the legacy transfers to perform it. So with this, it's gonna cost us 257,000 to actually give Messi that, right? But what if you want to kind of, I suppose, what if you want to pick what transfer that you have? Make sure and lock the players as well if you want to do that to make sure that you can't get rid of them, right? What if you're kind of thinking to yourself, well, what if I give the player another card or another player skill? You actually can't give an additional skill in this method that we're doing. It's kind of an extra insurance. You can't give it to Bellingham because he already has it. So he won't come up as a trainer candidate here. 
and there'll be nothing to be transferred because Bellingham already has the skill that we're trying to transfer. So yes, we can give it to Messi, but that's only because he doesn't have the skill. If Messi had this skill that we're trying to give him, you can't duplicate it this way. So it's again, an extra little bit of insurance policy that you're not gonna waste any skill trainers. Basically, you want to get the most bang for your buck, right? Messi does not have this skill trainer. He doesn't have this skill, this player skill or this additional skill. So we are able to give Messi the rising shot by simply turning the player that we gave the rising shot to, which was a lottery, and we got rising shot, we're now able to cherry pick who we give that to, which is in this case, it's gonna cost us 257,000 GP. Now, as this kind of develops, right, and as you get more and more players, you can see there that we now have the additional skill given to Messi. He now has all his remaining player skills, plus we an additional skill of rising shot, and the player is taken away. Now, you can rinse and repeat this as much as you possibly want. Go back into the standard player list, buy any player that you want. Some people say that like if you buy a DMF, there's more chance of getting defensive minded stats and player skills and stuff like that. I mean, it depends, it depends. Sometimes you have luck with it, sometimes you don't. I usually buy four or five players and then give one skill. Now, one thing that I like to do, right, even though I'm not light on GP in the game, I do like to, with my road to glory, get the most bang for my buck. And if I'm going to be training a player, I would rather give a player maybe three or two, at least two player skills, because it does cost half or quarter of a million every time. So again, we're going to go in here, we're going to roll the dice, cut behind and turn. That's not really what we're looking for. We want Bellingham here is our main target. We want to give Bellingham defensive skills, right? Blocker, sliding tackle, uh, man marking, stuff like that. So we actually look out and get heading, which is gonna be the frequency of headers, um, downward headers, which is more kind of for attacking, but this is actually at a very overpowered defensive skill as well, right? And we're gonna roll the dice again, and we get very lucky with getting sliding tackle. So now we've got two phenomenal um, defensive minded skills, right? Or else we can have an attacking skill, which is heading and throw a sliding tackle on as well. So that could be interesting if you wanted to have a center forward that has heading, um, but we're gonna be choosing Bellingham, right? We don't look out and get blocker, but this card is the big time, so we do have game change and pass and interception. So again, we're gonna go back and convert the player, and we are going to give Bellingham these two new skills that we just acquired from that. And now, instead of it costing us 257,000 each go, it's now only gonna cost us 317,000, and we get two skills with this. So now you can see here that this Bellingham has got all the player skills, plus these additional skills that we just gave him, heading and sliding tackle. So we've turned him into a really defensive dominant box to box, right? We've got 88 tackling, 88 aggression, 85 speed. We still have the low pass. We still have the acceleration. We still have the balance and stamina, but we've got them really good defensive stats as well. Now you might be asking, right? Is there a way to get more skill trainers? The best way to do it, lads, if you are new to the game and you haven't done this before, right? Is to literally just do the events, right? You will see here that in each event every week, you will have a skill trainer mostly as the main reward for the AI challenges, right? Where you play against the CPU, you play against different levels of the AI, right? Now you will see in here, we want to max out our player bonus and our points per victory, right? Because we're not even going to play these games. We're going to let the AI play it and just do sim mode or management mode, right? We're not even going to be playing it. We won't even go in and have a cup of tea or whatever, right? Do a few jumping jacks, do a few push-ups, whatever you want to do. We're simply going to go in and buy the cheapest players for the event to max our rating on our squad so that we're getting the most bang for our buck and the most points for just literally even losing games. It doesn't make a difference. Like all it takes is time, right? So we're going to buy a couple of cheap Japanese J1 league players, go back into the event. We're going to auto pick the players by player bonus, by the stats, and then we're going to max out this so that our max rating is going to be over 2000, right? We're going to go straight into a match and we're going to let that play, let that roll. It doesn't matter win, lose, or draw. Roughly, you get, I think, 700 points per a loss on Legend. So, uh, I think it's like 780. So, you need to, if you lose five games, you'll still unlock the main reward just by default, or four games. So, you just need to play four games on that. Once you have your maxed out squad over 2,000 team rating, right? Because that means that even if you lose the games, you're going to be getting points here as I, as I show you here. So you can see here that I've got every single one of my players on the game plan that is going to be a J1 league, and I'm going to be getting 728 per loss. 
So that means that I just need to another 2,270 points. So it doesn't matter whether you win, lose, or draw. Now, some games you will win, some games you won't. It depends on what difficulty that you play at. The lower the difficulty, the more chance you have of your AI actually scoring goals, right? Um, and you can couple this up with other objectives as well. But that is a good way that if you are looking to get more and more skill trainers, do the events. You know, you don't get them in the match pass. You don't, you're not able to buy them but they do give them out every now and again in the login bonuses and stuff like that as well, right? So if you want to do that, I would definitely, the way I would do it is, especially if you're light on GP, is cherry pick and really target who you want to train up with the additional skills and then try and give him two, three player skills at the same time. So I hope this, this in, uh, helped you out a little bit. And if it did, don't forget to subscribe and we will talk to you later. Peace.